there, everybody. It's me, Cody, on Microsoft, where today we'll be taking a look at what's new for Windows Insiders in the Windows Insider Fast Ring. I say it that way because it's been a little while since I've brought you all up to date on the features and changes so far in 19H1. So today, I'll be going over things from several Windows Insider builds, including the latest 18329. I should state right away that what I'm demonstrating in this video are unfinished or work-in-progress features, many of which you'll get to test for yourself in the next public release of Windows 10, 1903, presumably this March. I wouldn't recommend trying to install this build of Windows 10 on your device, as it may be quite buggy. If you're already a Windows Insider, you'll notice that the Windows Insider page in this settings app has a new design that makes it easier to control your involvement in the program. This includes the option to opt out of receiving Insider builds as soon as you hit the public release. Has this build of Windows 10 completely destroyed the usability of your device? Well, be glad to know that it also comes with a brand new method to delete itself. The UI for Reset This PC should now be a little bit more consistent across different device configurations. Of course, I have a pretty basic device configuration, so this page looks identical to the way it did for me, but if uh, you've just recently updated to a newer build of Windows 10, the previously installed version should still be available on your PC as temporary files, allowing you to roll back to that without having to completely reset your PC. Heading over to the storage section of the Windows settings, you can see a breakdown of what exactly is using up the storage on your PC. Under System Files, you can see how much storage space Windows has set aside for various OS features. Starting with Windows 10 version 1903, Windows 10 will begin setting aside storage for critical OS functions with something new called Reserved Storage. Reserved Storage will be used for temporary files, updates, app, and system caches. With access to set-aside disk space for caches and temporary files, Windows should continue functioning properly when users run their devices with little to no free disk space. Reserved storage will also be the first thing Windows consumes when an update is available, but will, of course, proceed to write to whatever disk space it needs in order to download. In the next version of Windows 10, about 7 gigabytes will be set aside in reserved storage by default, but like other system files, this will almost certainly change to accommodate what you do on your PC. As you can see, I only have about 3 gigabytes of reserved storage according to this page here. While we're here in settings, I may as well show you that it's now possible to drag and drop font files into the font section to install them. Cortana and Search have been intertwined since the days of the dedicated search button on Windows Phone, a combo which has since migrated into Windows 10. With each release, Microsoft has tried to address complaints about the reliability of Search in Windows 10, however, it never seems to be quite enough. With Cortana's text processing and Windows file indexing clashing with each other for the top spot in your results, it might be best for both players to part and go on one's own. In the next release of Windows 10, users will find Cortana's been bumped out of the search bar into her own little icon on the taskbar. As for right now, though, it seems that the search box behaves exactly as it did before, even processing questions and queries that link back to Cortana and her own feature set. The focus here seems to be cleaning up the UI. Instead of seeing suggestions for voice dictation when opening the search bar, you'll get suggestions based on your commonly used apps. The whole taskbar flyout is now entirely dedicated to the Windows search experience, rather than trying to provide an all-in-one solution for everything someone might want to type to their PC. The whole panel has a subtle acrylic blur to it. You can search categories along the top alongside an ellipsis menu with a single item for configuring the Windows search indexer. Below the categories, you'll find a row of your top apps followed by a list of your recent activities. Hovering the cursor over any of these items highlights them with a nice acrylic drop shadow. Cortana obviously being an exception, all the taskbar flyouts have been updated to appear properly in the new light taskbar theme. Icons in the system tray and notification area should follow suit, appearing black alongside the others. Interestingly, the settings icon is now dark gray instead of black against the taskbar. The settings icon is alone in this change, however, I think it has a more pleasing appearance. As support for the light theme becomes more thorough, so too is support for the dark side. As suggested by many Windows insiders, the reading pane in Mail now has a dark background to complement the dark theme. If a particular message isn't formatted properly for a dark background, a white background can be restored by clicking on the little sun icon in the command bar. Other parts of the UI are affected by this as well, such as the composition pane or the detail pages in the calendar. 
Also, in mail settings, users can pick the default appearance of new messages they create in mail. These changes aren't specific to the latest build of Windows 10 and are available for Windows Insiders as app updates from the Microsoft Store. Improved support for various RAW image formats can be acquired through the RAW Image Extension Beta Package in the Microsoft Store. While Windows 10 has already a varying degree of support for some RAW image formats, this package provides a more thorough experience for even more common RAW image formats. Previously unsupported RAW images can now be viewed directly in File Explorer and Photos with thumbnails, previews, and metadata. Another interesting development available to Windows Insiders is support for legacy desktop applications in the Windows Mixed Reality environment. Launching a classic desktop app from Windows Mixed Reality can be done right from the All Apps section in the Pins panel in a folder called Classic Apps Beta. As of right now, I seem to have issues making this experience function as intended. However, this is obviously a beta feature, and I'm sure Windows Insiders, including myself, will be keen to provide feedback and support about the development of this feature. These builds can be quite unstable, as you can see, and may still harbor bugs that can cause frustration or bog down your device. This won't cause your device to explode, but be careful and think twice before installing them on something important. Many of the features I've discussed will reach a Windows update available to the general public in the future, but until then, you can subscribe and check out onmicrosoft.com for more info. Additional links will be available in the description. Thank you, goodbye.